Thank you so much. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this beautiful Sunday service we're, going to be, we're about to have. We're going to start right now by singing our opening chant, God is My Source, led by the lovely Diane Vincent. <laughs> God is my source, God is my power, God gives me everything I need. So I give thanks for all my blessings, God gives me everything I need. God is my source, God is my power, God gives me everything I need. So I give thanks for all my blessings, God gives me everything I need. God is my source, God is my power, God gives me everything I need. So I give thanks for all my blessings, God gives me everything I need. God is my source, God is my power, God gives me everything I need. So I give thanks for all my blessings, God gives me everything I need. God gives me everything I need. God gives me everything I need. Good morning. So good to see those of you who are here in person, and welcome also to those of you who are joining us virtually, uh, either by Facebook Live or Zoom. Happy Father's Day to all your dads and father figures out there. <laughs> so let's join together right now in prayer. Mm, just taking a nice deep breath. And as we release that, just release any thoughts about anything that has come up until this moment, what is yet to be. Closing our eyes, turning inward, just aligning with that power and presence of God right at the center of our being. For truly, God is the one power, the one life, the one infinite goodness out of which everything in this manifest universe comes into being. And its nature is found at the center of all that is, including each and every one of us gathered here this morning, in person or virtually. We are all expressions of this life of God. Every moment we feel an impulse to experience goodness, which is God's goodness seeking the realization and expression of itself through us. And I know that that goodness and grace and love of God is flowing throughout our time together. That we absolutely feel that embrace of God's love as we feel our connection with each other, as we feel that love of all of those who are of service this morning. I know it's, it is God's artistry creativity and beauty that flows through our music ministry, through Sam, through Bob, our soloist Tina, and Diane who leads our chants. And I know that the word of God is spoken through Dr. Mark this morning, that he is that vessel through which the divine speaks to our hearts and minds, reminding us of who we are as divine beings. And so I'm giving thanks right here, right now, for all the healing, the awakening, the revealing of good that transpires throughout this service, blessing us as we go forward in life. And in gratitude, I release this word, knowing it is so, I let it be, and so it is, and together we say, Amen. It is glorious to feel the Holy Spirit deep within, ever present and more constant than the sun. Glorious to feel God's presence. 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So let's join in our congregational song, Surely the Presence. Surely the presence of love is in this place. I can feel its mighty power and its grace. I just realized I didn't remind those of you who are here to please be sure cell phones or anything are silenced. So if we could just make sure we do that before we join now in meditation, that would be great. <laughs> okay, so we're going to spend the next five minutes just in the stillness, giving ourselves the gift of communing with that presence at the center of our being. So I invite you to close your eyes, to get still in your bodies. And for the next five minutes, just silently repeat the phrase, God is the love that I am. God is the love that I am. Just silently repeat that mantra over and over again, and I'll bring us out in five minutes.
to see you all back. Mystery man, I come to you for answers, trying to solve the puzzles in my brain. Did you know a mighty wind came rushing in and took my love in a hurricane? Do clouds relate to one another or do they get so tense that they have to blow? I don't know science, but I know my heart aches every time a loved one has to go. Mystery man, you've got it all together, that's why everybody comes to you. And I suppose I should have asked you sooner then I'd know exactly what to do. I'm wondering why can't people live forever? Can you tell me where do I belong? I'm wondering can you tell me which way leads to heaven? Would you show me the answers to this song? Mystery man, today I saw a rainbow and suddenly a smile was on my face. Is it real, or is it really magic? All those colors sharing in one space. Sunrise and sunset, and in between. Life ain't that simple, it cannot be. Mystery man, I just want to understand. Oh, mystery man, would you help me understand? Nice. Uh, hi, good morning. It's wonderful to see you. I'm so glad you're here. Thank you for being with us today. Well, it's Father's Day, so if you are a father, just give us a little wave, fathers, and let us acknowledge you and love you and thank you for... Yay! Of course, fathers at home, too, fathers wherever you are, if you have put that fathering energy into the world, we so appreciate you. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about this idea of shaping our destiny. Ernest Holmes says in our textbook that fate is not kismet, that our karma is not sealed in cement. So what I find often is that people um, often will say something like, well, you know, I guess this is just what God has laid out for me, as if they have no creative input into the story of how their life unfolds. See, what we believe in the science of mind is that we co-create our life experience by using these principles in an intelligent and creative way to 
expand our life in healthy ways. If we weren't supposed to have this ability, I don't feel like God would have given us this, this power, this creative impulse. But clearly, this power and creative impulse has been given to all of us. Like it says in the Bible, God gave Adam and Eve dominion, dominion over everything that was in the garden. So if earth is the garden, we have dominion over it to use as intelligently, as wisely as we possibly can. I'm fascinated by this word entropy. And the word entropy means for an object to continue to go in the same direction it's already going. So we all uh, suffer from entropy. We are all going to continue going in the direction we're going unless we do something to change that. Um, and I think that what has been the general tendency for most people is to think that information will change it. You know, that if I get the right information, if I read the right book or take the right class, if I hear Dr. Mark tell me the right Sunday service or something like that, that but what I realize is that information alone does not do it. I think we've probably all had most of the information for decades, I mean, to tell the truth. I mean, when did you buy your first metaphysical book? You know, for me, it was over 40 years ago. The, so the information, honestly, has not changed that much <laughs> in the last 40 years. But what has changed is my understanding, my application, my embodiment of these principles. You know, so, so I look at things again and again. You know, it's always so interesting to me how I'll read a book, and then I'll put the book on the shelf. I'm like, yeah, it was okay. I got something out of it. It was pretty good, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then maybe a year or two later, I'll go back and look at the exact same book. And it's like the elves have come in the night, and they've rewritten the book because everything I didn't highlight is now what I need to highlight. And I swear they've put in new sentences while, while I wasn't looking at the book. So it's, so it's not just about the information. That's, that's the point I want to make there. I think we have to take the information and work with the information and process it and, and, and apply it and make it work in our own life. We talk a lot about the creative process of life in, in our church here. And, and the way we say it in the most simple way is that we plant a seed and in the soil, and then eventually there's a flower, right? Seed, soil, flower. And this is what we are doing all the time. But in the meantime, I think that there's the building and maintaining of our own consciousness. You know, while we're planting those seeds and waiting for them to come to fruition, you know, that we have to continue, I think, it's, I think it's ongoing work, that we're always building, we're always maintaining, expanding our consciousness, because a, a, a consciousness where the demonstration is the natural result of just having that consciousness, that's the kind of consciousness I think we're after, that we just have such a good consciousness, such an uplifted, expansive, inclusive, accepting consciousness that when good shows up in our life, we just say, yeah, of course, this is exactly, exactly what's supposed to happen, absolutely. So um, on Friday night here at church, we, we showed a movie, The Sound of Metal, uh, Paul Racy, uh, Liz Racy, who's worked with our teens for years, uh, her husband was uh, nominated uh, for Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress. And then after we watched the movie, and the movie was wonderful, he was brilliant in it, just incredible, uh, Paul and Liz uh, shared with us after the service. We got to ask some questions and stuff. And, um, and you know what I, what I really left with is that Paul, Paul this was Paul's first nomination for an Academy Award. He did not come from nowhere. Paul has been working at being an actor for well over 40 years. He has done over 40 years of productions on stage and sometimes in film and on TV, but he's been working at it and working at it and working at it. And we get to benefit from the demonstration of his consciousness today. Right? So I think this is the process that we, each of us, are going through actually all the time. You know, like Paul talked about just, you know, getting up and going to work every day. And he's like, yeah, I'm an actor, but I also have a job. And I go to my job so I can pay my mortgage and live my life. And, you know, and yes, and I, and I, and I love acting. You know, this, it was just so inspiring to see that he had Seems, it seemed to me that he had really made peace with, this is what I got to do in order to be able to do this other thing that I really love. 
And it's not that I don't love doing this, because I'm sure he gives his very best to this, which is why the universe responds to him with the very best over here. Do we see how that works? That we have to bring the best of ourselves to whatever we're doing, and the universe then, in turn, takes us seriously. They say, okay, he's so serious about this, he's giving it his best effort here, then let's give him more. Because this is what it means in the Bible, you know, where it says you know, that if you take care of the little plot of land that God gives you, God gives you more to take care of. But if you're not taking care of what you have, if you're not being responsible with it and intelligent in your use of the principle, then the universe is not going to give you more to be master of. I think, like so much of life, it's, it's in the doing of the daily simple stuff again and again and, and again but you know, doing the daily simple stuff, it's boring, isn't it sometimes? It's just boring. You know, it's like, oh, I did that yesterday. Do I have to do that again today? But you know, it's not just doing the simple daily stuff that we need to do again and again. It's infusing that daily stuff that we do with good consciousness, with bringing good awareness, with bringing the spirit of God into our consciousness when we're doing it. You know, I had this major realization during COVID. I'm embarrassed to tell you this, uh, but I'm going to tell you anyway, um, that it's easy to do the stuff that I need to do, right? We've all been doing it for years, probably, right? Uh, you know, it's easy to, you know, I can walk the dog. That's not hard to do. And I got to walk the dog about eight times a day, sometimes more. It's okay. I can do that. It's easy to just reach over and take out that yoga mat and throw it down on the floor and say, ah, oh, do a couple of poses. All right. Yeah, that's not that hard to do. Um, it's easy to say, you know, I'm going to do a little more spiritual practice. I'm going to meditate for an extra 10 minutes starting today. It's, it's easy. You know, for us, it's easy to eat healthy. It's easy to do the things we know we should do for our general well-being. That came through during COVID to me so loud and clear. Now, here's the embarrassing part. It also came through even louder and clearer that, yes, it's easy to do all those things that would add to my life in a healthy way, but the amazing thing is it's also easy to not do them. <laughs> you know? Honest to God, if it's easy to walk the dog, it is even easier to just sit my carcass back on the sofa and think about walking the dog, you know? While another episode of Blue Bloods goes by, you know? And on and on and on with all of those things. Wow, this, this is that whole thing about entropy that a body continues to go in the direction that it's already going. And so if I'm not doing the stuff that I know is easy to do, right, so in the foundation class, I've used this example. I could say, all right, I'm gonna start to eat healthy. Now I know, we all know that's probably a good thing, whatever our idea of eating healthy is. And so now if I don't eat healthy at lunch, when I leave church, if I do not get the salad and I get the jumbo platter of deep fried, right? <laughs> Deep fried anything, because it really doesn't matter to me. I, I mean, honestly, I'm one of those people, if you deep fried gravel, I would probably eat it. And say it was good, because I love it. Especially if I had that like crispy tempura batter on it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Why was I telling you that? Oh, OK. So imagine this, that you have a bowl of salad or the plate of deep fry. OK, what, it's OK, it's all right. It's all God. It's all God. But what our mind does with it is the most important thing. So if I eat the salad today or the deep fry today, it's probably not going to change much. But what if I sped ahead for like a month? And, and I could show you, if I put on a big table here, 30 salads that I ate. Over a month, there would be kind of like a mountain of salad, you know? <clears throat> or a mountain of deep fry. Hmm, at the end of the month, how I feel might be different. Huh? At the end of a month? What about at the end of a year? oh my God, you might have to scrape me up off the floor, I think. You know, you, I, I, I would be like those crumbs at the bottom of the fryer that have just been in there for too long. So this is, I'm telling you, this is the big realization I've had from COVID, that yeah, it's easy to do the right thing, but it's also so easy to not do it. And this is what I got. I like, so why is it so easy, God? Spirit, show me, why is it so easy to not do the right thing? Because you think in the moment it's not going to matter. In, right now, it's like, well, if I have, oh, I'm going to have french fries today. It's not going to matter. 
well, yeah, right now, today, it doesn't matter so much. But if I do that, every, did you see my point with this? That if I keep going in the direction I'm going, I'm going to keep getting what I've gotten. And if I go in a different direction, if I do something different, I will open up to a different world of experience. And I think the universe has vast experiences that none of us have even tapped into yet. Why? Because the universe is infinite. I think our decisions do matter. In fact, I'm even going to go so far as to say I think every decision we make actually matters. Because, you know, I like to say, and I've said it here a million times in church over the years, that our habits create our destiny. And so we all want to do, we all want to do something. We all want to have some experience in life. We all want to take some action. But I think a good life philosophy, you know, my philosophy, your philosophy of life helps. Having a good basic philosophy, and this is what science of mind has given me, that we used to say that science of mind was a faith, a philosophy, and a way of life. Now I think it really is. It is a way to live. Because science of mind has given me a completely different experience of life than I had before science of mind. And I'm here to tell you, this is a much better experience than I was having before science of mind, which is why I feel like I'm such an advocate for the teaching. It's like, I have lived another way. It was not so good. Honestly, it wasn't. It was not so good. It was fraught with drama and chaos and lack and all that other nonsense. And the science of mind gave me the tools to move forward and have a completely different experience of life. Now, I think that also, also, if we do not have a good attitude, it's harder to take the actions that will give us the good result that we want. And face it, you know, a bad attitude isn't doing anybody any favors. I mean, have you ever said, hey, let's call our friends and spend some time with them this weekend. They have a really bad attitude. You know, we don't say things like that. You know, that attitude, attitude is really, really important. Do not kid yourself. So don't tell yourself it doesn't matter. Or don't tell yourself what I do, it doesn't matter. You know, yes, it does. It absolutely does matter. Um, to say it doesn't matter, I think, is really, um, it's an error in our judgment. You know, so one time, yeah, it may not so much, but compounded over time, wow, it makes a difference. So in the foundation class, what I always say to people is, look, I want you to meditate for five minutes every day, just five minutes. Could you do five minutes? Five, we've all been on hold for longer than five minutes. What's five minutes? Five minutes is nothing. And they say, oh, well, five minutes. So many years ago when I started to meditate, teachers would say this to me, and, and sometimes I wouldn't. And so I'd add it up and I'd say, well, I'm going to do it all on Saturday. You know? So on Saturday, now this is, long, this is like 40 years ago. So, on, okay, Saturday comes, and now on Saturday, I owe 35 minutes of meditation. And sometimes I would sit there for 35 minutes, and, and, and that was good, but I knew that really what was better was to sit every single day a little bit, that that's how consciousness really gets changed. It's like the gym. You know, if you say you're gonna go to the gym every day and you don't go, you can't go one day a week and just really kick butt, can you? I mean, you can't do a whole week's worth of workouts in one day. They'll have to sweep you to the side, you know, because you won't be able to move. And I think it's the same with our spiritual practice. Although I love days where I have lots of extended spiritual practice, where I can sit and meditate a couple of times for lengthy periods of time. I can pray and pray and pray, do my treatment work, read affirmations until the cows come home. And the cows will come home if you read enough affirmations. This is true. Um, that, that, that I love that, but, but you know, I realize we all have life happening and it doesn't always happen, but if you just did five minutes at the end of a month, ooh, how much would you have? 150 minutes, that's more than a couple hours of meditation. You'll have actually meditated for a couple of hours. And if you did that every week, would your life be different? Absolutely, I guarantee you, your life would be different. Emerson said, do the thing and you'll have the power. Isn't that great? I just love that. Do the thing, right? So you can't be on the grow. You can't be successful if you think unsuccessful, if you do unsuccessful, if you hang out with unsuccessful. I'm sorry, but that's just the way it is. You know, what have I learned? I'm sorry, what have I learned? I think we ask ourselves um, about people who are 
having a life that looks like more of what I'd like to experience? What have, I, what have we learned about people who really have great love in their life? What have we learned about people who have great prosperity in their life? What have we learned about people who are tremendously healthy? You know, I think that they all take responsibility for their actions. I think that that's a common denominator. You know, that if, if we blame, and I've blamed, have you blamed? I've blamed. I have no blame. Blame and I used to be on a first name basis. Blame gives up control. Blame gives our power over to that other person. So I get it that when we start to form a new habit, it's uncomfortable at first. It's foreign at first. It's like when you bought your favorite pair of shoes that maybe when you first wore them, they were a little uncomfortable, but then over time they break in to fit your shape, right? I read, um, I've read a lot this week about this, and I thought this was very interesting, that successful people do what unsuccessful people don't do. So what do I mean by successful people? Well, you know, whatever that is to you, it, because it, it applies for all areas. So I want to be um, more healthy, we say, okay? All right, so I want to be more healthy. So then I've got to eat healthier food, right? But you know, there's a habit in my mind that says, yes, 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 there'll be plenty of healthy food later. Look at this junk. <laughs> you know, and you know, junk is usually very colorful, isn't it? It's bright orange. It's crunchy. It's golden, deep fried. <laughs> beautiful colors, beautiful colors in nature. <laughs> so again, I want to highlight that in the moment, it seems like things don't matter. And I believe, I believe they, they really do. That little decisions we make again and again actually count for a lot. I have to have a, when I want something, this is the newest piece I've also discovered, that when I want something, or I say I want something, I have to sit in the silence of my soul and say, why? Why do I want this? Why is this important to me? Because if I have a compelling why, I mean a really compelling why, I know I will do what I need to do to make it so. I will if I have a really good why. But, but if I just think, eh, it would be nice. It's kind of a nice idea. Everybody else has this. Everybody else is doing this. That's not a compelling why. You know when you really want something, like when it's really, really important? And that's what I love. Because like when it's really important, when we have this compelling why, we will do whatever it takes. I don't care if it's midnight. I will stay up and meditate because I need to meditate again. You know, I don't, I'll, I'll, you don't think you have time to pray in the morning? I will set the alarm earlier and get up Take the dog out and come back in and say, I'm awake, I'm alive, I'm enthusiastic. <gasps> I can meditate, yes, and do it, you know, and just do what I need to do. See, I believe that we can all create it, whatever it is. I believe that every single person on the face of the earth has been endowed with a creative capacity, and some of us just don't know it yet. But if we want more from life, you know, but don't have it, that doesn't mean we can't have it. You know, I... Look, there were really, really good people struggling, not succeeding, and that's a very, very common scenario. I hate to see good people struggle. You know, my parents worked really, really hard their whole lives. They were workers. They had the greatest work ethic of anybody I've ever known. They, were, they, they worked all the time, but they also struggled. So just because they were really good people and really hardworking people doesn't mean that they were uh, as easily successful as, it, I, I mean, they, they weren't as successful as they could have been, and I think they could have had a lot more ease in their experience there, is what I'm trying to say. Um, I think success, I've heard this definition, success is a progressive realization of a worthy ideal. I love that, a progressive realization of a worthy ideal. So. So here's what I know. In the science of mind, my goal is to live from a place of knowing my oneness with God. That's a really worthy ideal for me, all right? To live from a place of knowing my oneness with God. And then I think, but I don't want to just know that for me, you know, because that's, that's kind of boring. It's just me. I like people. <laughs> I want to know that for everybody else as well, you know? So when I'm driving or walking in the market, that my realization around every single person, you know, is is that they are this perfect expression of the one. 
completely unified with, just as we all are. I think that that's a simple thing to say, a little bit harder to do, but you know, simple positive actions done consistently over time will transform our lives. You know, this is, this is what Jesus said. Jesus said to love God and love your neighbor. That's the bottom line right there. You know, love God, love your neighbor, that's it. Buddha, watch your thoughts. If you would watch your thoughts, you could become... See, these are very simple actions, but done consistently, done with some awareness, we will absolutely change our lives. We will be transformed from the inside out. I think we live in a very results-focused world. You know, uh, uh, so we say, well, like the result I want is health, or the result I want is abundance, the result I want is a mate. You know, um, most of us know at least a good portion of what we are supposed to do to create the consciousness where that health or relationship or abundance is the natural result. But a bad choice today, it's not going to kill you, you know? Now, it may take years to kill you, <laughs> but it would, but it won't right away. See, and, and that's the thing about, you know, years ago, um, I went to an accountant when I became a minister, and, uh, and I said, in all honesty, I know absolutely nothing about investing. How do I do this? You know, I've got to start to think about my future. And the guy said, compound interest. You need to do compounding. And I was like, really? That's interesting. He says, yep. Yeah. He said, you just keep putting money in every month, and over time, you're going to do great. And you know, that has been really true. I mean, it's really an extraordinary thing that if you just do things consistently, they grow. If we give attention to our consciousness consistently, it will grow, right? Because the principle is what you focus on increases. So let's turn our attention inward now for a moment. We'll do a little bit of inner work together and then go into our treatment. So I invite you to bring your awareness to the pattern of your breathing. Just breathe in normally, breathe out normally. And let your awareness rest in the center of your heart so that with each breath, the area of your heart becomes fuller and richer and deeper because it's at the point of our heart where the highest God and the innermost God truly become one God. And so as I say these words, accept them for yourself. I say today, this morning, into the universal mind that is God, that I am willing to change. I am willing to change my mind. I'm willing to change my heart. I'm willing to, change, I'm willing to change the perception I have of myself and the world around me. I'm willing to change what I do and how I do it. I know that of myself I can do nothing. Like it says in the Bible, it's the Father, Mother, God within that doeth the work. Therefore, I am willing to allow God's Spirit to heal and change me at the soul level so that I may be all that God, infinite loving spirit, created me to be. I'm willing to be transformed and have my true mind restored, to have my heart renewed according to God's perfect vision. And so recognizing in the mind and heart of God that we are all connected, that we are one on the unseen side of life, I speak this word that we declare healing in our world today. That where there is the appearance of not peace, we claim perfect peace. Peace that passes all human understanding. We claim all needs met for all people everywhere. We bless our church, we bless all churches, synagogues and temples and mosques and ashrams, all paths to God. And I'm certain that we are blessed by being together today, that there is a raising up for each and every one of us and so it is with an open, gracious, full heart that I give thanks that this is the truth, that we are set free, that our destiny is truly, truly within our own hands, and we have all that we need within us right now to shape it in a way that's happy, joyous, prosperous, and free. So with a full heart, I say thank you, God. I release this word into God's perfect law, and so it is. Together we all say, 
Amen.